Hello and welcome to another episode of Argus Talks. I am Krishna Vadat, the managing partner of Argus Partners. Today we will be discussing some of the recent amendments in the SEBI LODR regulations, which affects non-convertible debt securities. The LODR regulations have been amended to include a new regulation 62A, which provides for mandatory listing of non-convertible debt securities issued by listed companies. This is a crucial development in the corporate debt market of India, since these amendments are expected to have a significant impact on the regulatory framework governing private placements of debt securities. To add more to this, I have with me Nidhi Arya, who is a partner in our banking and finance practice. Welcome Nidhi. Now that we all know that a company that already has listed its shares on any recognized stock exchange must ensure that all its further issuances of shares are also listed. With this background, my first question to you is, how did the situation differ vis-a-vis -vis shares and non-convertible debt securities or NCDs of a listed company prior to the amendment? And what are these amendments that SEBI has now brought into effect? Sure. Thank you, Krishnava. Uh, so non-convertible debt securities or NCDS are essentially securities which have a fixed maturity period and which either create or acknowledge any indebtedness. Examples being debentures and bonds. Coming to your question, it was always compulsory for a company that has listed its shares to list all its further issuances of shares on a stock exchange. But that was not the case for NCDS. Essentially, a company that had listed NCDS on any stock exchange could go ahead and later issue similar securities, which could have been either listed or unlisted. Now to bring about parity, SEBI has directed all listed entities, which have already listed their non-convertible debt securities, to also list all subsequent issuances of such securities. Additionally, if a listed company now wants to make a fresh issuance of listed NCDS, then such company has to also list all its previously unlisted NCDS uh, within a period of three months. These requirements have now all come into effect from January 1st, 2024. Thank you, Nidhi. Uh, so would this new requirement have any implications for issuers uh, could you highlight some of the key implications of this of this amendment vis-a-vis -vis issuers? So one of the effects of this amendment uh, would be that issuers with listed NCTS uh, would no longer be able to take obviously the unlisted route. Consequently, entities with listed NCDS, which have an aggregate outstanding value of 500 crore or more, may actually now fall within the bracket of high value debt listed entities. In which case, these entities would now have to comply with certain additional governance and regulatory compliances prescribed by SEBI. The amendment may also, to my mind, affect issuers proposing to raise funds from another group company which may be its subsidiary or its holding company. Uh, interestingly, in the original proposal from SEBI, an exemption was proposed to be provided for issuance of NCDS by a holding company to its subsidiary and vice versa. But this exemption was not finally included in Regulation 62A. Having said that, I just wanted to highlight that SEBI has also recently introduced a new Chapter 6A in the LODR regulations which actually provides a statutory framework for voluntarily delisting privately placed non-convertible debt securities. So essentially an entity that does not want to list any future debt securities has the option now to delist their subsisting NCDS after getting an approval from the debenture holders. Okay, so my next and a natural corollary to that would be, now what would happen? How would this amendment impact investors? Yes, so one clear advantage for investors of listed NCDS is that such investors would now have access to enforcement actions under the Sarfasi Act as secured creditors, which is obviously not available to investors subscribing to unlisted NCDS. Another advantage that this amendment may bring to investors 
would be that investors also have recourse to the grievance redressal mechanisms that SEBI and the stock exchanges provide. On the other hand, for private credit funds who are category 2 AIFs, this amendment may have a slight impact on their investment strategies. Since under the AIF regulations, category 2 AIFs are required to primarily invest in unlisted securities as against the, their other investments. So SEBI had actually considered this issue in its board agenda and uh, you know when this concern was raised, it responded by saying that necessary amendments will be made to the AIF regulations you know, to address this concern, but th that amendment has yet not come into effect. Sure, sure. Thank, thanks, Nidhi. That was very helpful. You know, can you throw some light on the, the rationale behind uh, the introduction of these amendments? I mean, were there any prevailing issues which these amendments were intending to address? So we can actually gain some insight on the rationale behind bringing in this amendment from the press note and the consultation paper that was released by SEBI. Primarily, the core objective of introducing this amendment seems to be to safeguard the interest of investors by one, facilitating transparency in price discovery, two, enhancing liquidity, and three, providing an easier exit for investors. It appears that the amendment was also introduced to bridge the information gap which was prevalent for investors of listed and unlisted securities of the same issuer. For example, prior to the amendment, an investor who had subscribed to listed non-convertible debentures of an issuer would have been entitled to receive disclosures as per the LODR regulations. However, an investor who had subscribed to unlisted NCDs of the same issuer would not have been entitled to receive the same disclosures. But now all investors of such securities of an issuer would be entitled to receive the same disclosures and information. So the amendment should actually bring in much uh, required transparency uh, in the debt market, Nidhi, right? So I also understand that SEBI has provided some exemptions. Uh, ca can you elaborate on these exemptions uh, which SEBI has provided? Yes, so SEBI has provided for certain exemptions from these listing requirements. So, for example, bonds which are issued under Section 54 EC of the Income Tax Act, that is investments in these bonds are excluded from capital gains tax, have been exempted. Also, non-convertible debt securities which are issued either pursuant to an agreement with a multilateral institution or under an order of a court or tribunal are not required to be listed. Another exemption that has been provided is for securities which are issued pursuant to any regulatory requirement of a financial regulator such as SEBI, RBI or IRTA. But on in all these cases, such securities are also required to be locked in till maturity and cannot be encumbered. Further, the entities which are issuing such exempted securities are also required to compulsorily make some disclosures to the stock exchange such as, you know, coupon rate, maturity period, security package, etc. Thank you, Nidhi, for sharing your insights with us. It was uh, really very helpful. This concludes our discussions on the amendment brought in by SEBI with respect to mandatory listing of NCDs. Um, thank you, everyone, once again, and look forward to catching up with all of you in the next episode of Arg Stocks. Bye-bye.